Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and on today's video, I'm going to try and figure out if I lost any gold in any of my smelting experiments. Um, I've saved all my slag and all my crucibles and all my fire brick, and so what we're going to do today is crush all this stuff up, run it through the turnkey system behind me, and see if we can recover any more gold. So here's some of the slag we're going to be running, um, and this is just all the various slag I've used up um, over the, the last several months. Um, I've got three buckets of slag. I'm going to also crush all the fire brick. Um, some of it's, you know, been spilled on and um, leaked all over. And so I want to crush all that. So my plan is, is I'm going to run all the slag and the fire brick together. And then separately, we're going to run all my used crucibles. And so these are crucibles that have leaked or broken or um, I've used up. You know, they only have a certain uh, shelf life. And um, I want to do them separate because my guess is that we have lost any precious metals. They're going to be in these crucibles. Um, and, uh, and so I want to see that separate. But uh, we'll run the slag first, and then we'll run the crucible second and see what we get. The process starts here with the jaw crusher module. I'm going to dump the material in the orange hopper. It's going to vibrate down through the 8x12 jaw crusher. Come out this conveyor belt into the fine ore hopper. There's a small feeder underneath, which meters the feed of the material out onto the second conveyor belt. The material comes up into the hammer mill here, which is a 16 inch by 12 inch, one ton per hour hammer mill. It's gonna grind the material to powder. We're, we weren't wet, so it comes out in a nice slurry onto our shaker table. All the dense material, the gold, the precious metals, or any lead or collector metal that's left there will come across into the number one and number two. We'll have a bucket here for the number three middlings, and any number four is going to go out and auger up the spiral classifier to be dewatered, and only about the 200 mesh minus is going to come out into the final tailings pond where the water is recirculated over and over again um, through the system.
Here's the number one and the number two from the slag. And then here's the number one and the number two from the crucibles. And so what I'm gonna do is I'll start with the slag and I'm just gonna combine these two and I'm gonna pan them down a little bit and see what we get. And then we'll work over uh, on the crucible one as well. So this is our slag sample here and I'm panning it down a little bit so we can see what we got. But um, right on the table there was quite a bit of lead and a little bit of copper. Um, and again, this is stuff that I've been experimenting with, trying different stuff, trying different collector metals, um, different flux recipes. So um, I'm not surprised if there's going to be some, some metal in here. Um, so I don't want you guys getting all worried about, you know, smelting is, is uh, not a good way to collect your precious metals. But it never hurts to save the slag and the crucibles um, and process them, you know, when you get them saved up and got a bunch to... To process just as a check i mean it doesn't hardly cost anything and there might be enough gold and silver in there to make it worth your while so that's kind of what we're experimenting with here so let me get this pan down and we'll take a look at what we got so i've got our stuff panned down here from the slag and these are all little lead bbs there's some copper in there um, there may be a little speck of gold here and there as well uh, but this is the number one and number two from the slag and so this is some of the stuff I've got, I don't know, a couple hundred grams here. So I'll get this stuff dried out and we're going to smelt all this down again. And then we'll keep pellet and see how much precious metal we have left. Now we're working on the crucibles, the high grade from the crucibles. And uh, we've had several customers actually send us samples of slag and mat from old mine sites. And we've run it through the system of samples and it's come back pretty good. Uh, so if you're, if you're ever exploring around old mine sites or old milling sites, um, keep an eye out for the glassy slag uh, or the mat from where they smelted their stuff down. That, that may be full of precious metals. So um, it's a good idea to, to figure out where those locations are. And um, if there's enough material, take a sample, get it assayed and figure out what's in there. And here's our panning cons from the crucibles. And there's actually surprisingly a lot less metal in here. Uh, but you'll see over here, we've got some little beads of gold. And so we've got a little, oops, we got a little bit of gold there, uh, quite a bit of copper, and then the rest of that dark gray stuff is lead. Here's our crucible cons dried out. I just dried them in a frying pan over the fire. Uh, and then I got this slag. This is our standard, or flux, I mean, I got our standard flux recipe here. It's 100 grams of anhydrous borax, 100 grams of lye, and 50 grams of silica sand. So we'll get that mixed up, put it in a crucible, and put it in our little furnace. This is the crucible that we just poured from and we were wondering where all the material went that went into the crucible and here as it happens there's a crack in the side of the crucible and most of it leaked out so we'll see what we get in the lead button.
So because I couldn't knock all the slag off of this and it's um, got a lot of copper in it, I'm going to cover it with another cupel and let it warm up and heat up. So if that slag starts popping or um, anything kind of goes weird inside there, it'll be contained and it doesn't splash all over a furnace. And then once it's all molten and up to temperature, I'll take that top cupel off and then we'll let it uh, oxidize as normal. Here's our second bead, and it's quite a bit softer. Now I can hit it and, it and it deforms instead of breaks like our first one. But it is still, it's still brittle. You can see it's starting to break there. So there's quite a bit of copper in it. So I'm gonna add some lead to this and put it in a cupel and see if we can get it uh, driving that lead and copper out of there. And there's our precious metal lead alloy. And those little black beads that are forming on top is the lead oxide. And they're rolling off down into the cupel. And that process is gonna continue until all the lead is gone and that button will be just precious metals. This is our stuff from the crucibles and here's our bead. And there's just too much base metal in there still to get it down to precious metals. There's uh, probably too much copper. So I'm going to pluck that bead out of there, put it in this uh, fresh one, and add another 30 or 40 grams of lead and keep going and see if we can get that down to precious metals. All right, here's our two beads. This one's from the crushed up crucibles, and this one's from the slag. Um, and interestingly enough, they weigh just about the same, um, right around 0.95 grams. Um, and I had to cupel them like three times to get uh, the base metals out of them. They kept coming up with a little oxidized film. And even this one here um, still is, is kind of pockmarked and, and doesn't look like all 100% of the base metals are out of it. Um, this one's a little bit better. It's uh, The bead is, is kind of pulled up into a, a bead form. It has a lot bigger convex surface on the top and uh, and a little bit better finish but i'm going to take our two beads now and put them together and do a final cupel on them and see if i can get a real nice shiny uh silvery gold colored bead they're they're also both about the same same color there there's definitely some yellow to them um but i do believe there's some silver in there probably 60 percent gold 70 percent gold somewhere in there um so we do have a uh, quite a bit of silver and here's our final bead so we'll get it plucked out of there and get it weighed and see how much uh, precious metals we lost in our slag and crucibles. So there's our button under the windshield there. It weighs just shy of two grams. And so it's probably half and half, maybe a little bit more gold. Uh, so we're shooting probably right around a gram's worth of gold there out of our crucibles and slag. All right, so you can see uh, that it's really actually a pretty good idea to save all your slag and all your spent crucibles. We recovered a little under two grams of precious metal, probably again in that half to half ratio, about 50% gold, 50% silver. Um, so I'm hoping to get about a, a gram of gold out of that stuff. Um, but to be honest with you, I'm surprised that it wasn't more. Uh, I've saved that stuff up for years. 
uh, and I've done lots of smelts that didn't turn out very well. Some of the smelts, the slag was way too thick and I lost a bunch of metal. Some of them, the crucible broke. Some of them, uh, you know, the collector metal all went away. There was some mat in that stuff. So uh, to be honest with you, I thought it would be higher. Uh, and also to put it in perspective, I've smelted hundreds of grams of gold in the last couple of years in that stuff. And so our loss is probably less than 1%, um, even with all the screw ups that I did. So I don't want you guys thinking, oh my gosh, all my gold and precious metals are going away in my slag or in my spent crucibles. Uh, they're, they're probably not. It's, you're probably getting some really, really good recovery there. But uh, just, it, it doesn't hurt to save them and uh, run them through a system, gravity recover what you can, and then uh, recover the, the precious metals that you did lose. Um, at a later time. As a little bit of a side here, um, I wanted to show you guys uh, another use for um, the cupel furnace and cupelling. I've got all my little beads in here, and this is just from various stuff that I've smelted and, and refined over over the years. Um, and, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of little stuff. They're all separate. And if you mix a little bit of lead in there and cupel them, you can turn them all into one uh, large bead which is a lot easier to handle and it's harder to lose and stuff like that. So I um, wanted to show you uh, just real quick how you can take all your precious metal small beads and turn them into one large one. So I'm going to add a little bit of lead to our cupel now. And we're not refining anymore. We're just kind of conglomerating into one bead. So I don't need to add a whole lot. Um, this is just a chunk I, I had, about seven and a half grams. So I'll add that to our cupel and that'll uh, conglomerate it all into one bead once that lead oxidizes off. All right, we got our crucible in there. It's warming up. I like to warm up and dry them out a little bit before I put the lead in, uh, just so if there's any moisture, it dries out of there. And then I'm gonna put my lead right on top of my precious metal beads there. And we'll let that lead uh, form an alloy with all the precious metals. And once that lead comes up to temperature, it'll oxidize away and conglomerate all those beads into one large Precious metal bead. There you go, cupellation in progress. And there's a little bead. We got it pulled out of the furnace. It's mostly silver now, so it's probably over half silver by weight. Uh, but we'll get it pulled out of there and get it weighed. And there we go. We got a little over three grams. So I wanted to show you guys that's a real good way to take a bunch of little beads and stuff that you don't want to lose and conglomerate it into one nice big precious metal button. So thanks for watching. Let me know if you guys have any questions or comments. You can find our contact information in the description below or please leave a comment in the comment section. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.